Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review video. This time I was contacted by a company, hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, it's like UUO, UO? <laughs> anyway, um, they have a projector. So I've done a number of uh, projector reviews in the past from GymTab to Vankyo, I've done a couple of theirs. And this is sort of the higher end, I would say. So as of right now, which uh, it's like, October 22nd, I think today is. Um, it currently retails for $229, so it's not the low end. It's not the around the $100 mark low end. So this is definitely getting up into where you're actually dropping some more serious money and you want to have a permanent mount for this and have like a nice screen sort of thing going on. But um, as of the posting of this video, there's a $36 off coupon, so you can get it at least sub 200. So that's, I think, a reasonable uh, price uh, for the whole reason why this costs a, uh, a bit more than the others is this is a native 1080p. And it's um, supposedly uh, significantly brighter. Uh, now, this is the P6 model, and... This actually supports a couple different modes in addition to the other ones I've reviewed. So a lot of them have, you know, your, if you look down at the bottom here, they have uh, what they call U-Disc. It, it basically, you plug in a thumb drive with video files on it, and it plays it off the thumb drive. That's a pretty common thing. I'm actually interested in what it means network for screens. Does that mean if you had four of these, you can make like a giant, giant projector? Because that would be pretty cool, but... I don't know. I'm going to have to find out what that means. Um, it has keystone correction, both manual and digital. That's definitely a, a, a boon. A uh, huge screen projection. We'll be, we'll be the judges of that. And uh, LED lamp. So this is LED backlit. Now, this is a LCD tech projector. So inside is, I'm not sure the exact size, but judging from the resolution 1080p native, it's probably like a four to five inch LCD. And judging by the size of the box and the heft, this is definitely no small projector. So this is something that you want to have set up and you're not going to lug around with you. Now it does say it supports 4K HD, but that of course is going to be downscaling to the native 1080p. So you're not really going to get any benefit uh, from playing 4K content. Uh, it does, as I said, plus minus 50 degree keystoning. And the biggest thing that I think that this does differently is this will actually allow you to um, mirror cast from like your smartphone wirelessly cast video to this. And I know they sell dongles like HDMI dongles and that's a way of getting around it on some of the other projectors that, that I've used that don't have built in, but it's just more convenient having it built into the projector itself. And so I definitely like that feature, especially for like a home entertainment sort of setup. I can just throw videos from my phone on YouTube. If I want to watch it on the big screen, I don't have to dig out a cable and tether myself. Anyway, box is pretty big and hefty. And it weighs quite a bit. Let's just get into this. We have what appears to be an accessory box right at the top. And we'll take a quick look at this. Yeah, there you go. You have your obligatory manual with gold printing. Spare no expense. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... Don't try to smother your projector with a towel. Uh, don't look at your projector, otherwise it comes to life and attacks you. Uh, don't force your projector to sweep. Uh, don't stab your projector with a screwdriver. Well, that's kind of an obvious one. And don't precariously balance your projector right next to a cup of water. And they actually have a recommended section. Make sure your projector is allowed to close your blinds. And yeah, obviously make sure it's plugged in, etc., etc. Anyway, yeah, lots of in infographics. I love infographics. How to set up wireless on your device and cast it to there. How to set up keystone correction and angle and whatnot. Etc. Etc. Apparently, the mechanical keystone is uh, 15 degrees plus minus. And I just saw, interestingly enough, apparently you can you can real time it'll actually adjust digitally each of the corners, so you can make it exactly square. And that obviously cuts off some of the resolution in order to do that. And it, 
I'm guessing it does it like in the DSP. It'll do some image uh, morphing or something like that to get it to fit uh, to your configuration. But yeah, it's interesting that you can do that. Anyway, we have the obligatory HDMI cable. We have, interestingly enough, <laughs> one of these little AV dongles. So yeah, yeah, if you have an older game console, an NES or something, yeah, you can actually plug that in. That's pretty cool. We have an IEC AC adapter, and got those. We got our funny little plug here in the US. And something I don't usually see, a spare filter. So that's actually really cool that they give you a spare one. And it already comes in the little framey, and you just slide that in when your old one gets dusty. And a cleaning cloth, one of these lint-free jobs, obviously for the lens. And we have a remote here. Let's see how the remote is. This is probably, I'm going to guess this is pretty much identical to all the other ones that I've seen every other projector has. Oh, this is one of the side opening ones. Yep, triple A. I, I will say this design, where you actually have to like click, uh, put your fingernail into the side to pull it up, is less likely to fall off over the ones that just pull out straight. And oh yeah, um, this looks like a glow in the dark one. I'm gonna have to test that, but I, I like I like the glow in the dark remotes, especially it makes perfect sense for a projector. Uh, if your remote isn't backlit, backlit would obviously be better. Uh, but if you're sitting there in the dark and trying to fumble with the remote. At least making it glow in the dark is a very easy passive way of making it a little bit more user friendly, I think. But yeah, we got uh, power, mute, menu, source, uh, play, pause, and then our cardinal directions. Uh, and it doubles left, right for our volume up and down. Uh, track, skip, fast forward, rewind, all that is on here, and then back. Yeah, very simple, intuitive. And I want to see if this glows in the dark. Give me a sec. Yeah, look at that. It looks brighter on the camera screen. In, in real life, it's actually quite a bit dimmer, but it's perfectly visible. In the dark, I could definitely use this. So that's really cool. Okay, props to them for that. Let's check out the projector itself. This comes in a very nice, like, they well padded this. It has plastic corner ends, uh, like, pretty thick foam insert, and the projector itself is, like, not squishing not touching either the top or the bottom or the sides it's only interfacing to the box through the foam and there's an air gap so definitely i'm guessing they uh wanted to mitigate any problems with shipping um possibly banging it up so yeah model p6 pro guessing the pro i saw there was a slightly cheaper version that was like 30 bucks less it was like 200 that uh, didn't have the wireless capability. So I'm guessing the Pro designator means it has the wireless and thus costs a little more. You have little gray rubber feet here for non-skid, as well as, I'm very happy to see, uh, screw mounts. But yeah, anyway, so you can mount this. I'm guessing that's like a Visa mount. I'd actually have to measure it out. But at least you can rig this up to a ceiling mount. So that's definitely nice to see. We have our obligatory... QC pass sticker, no touchy, no touchy, if you want your warranty, that is. And we have a one of these little screw-out feet. Let's see how far it goes. <laughs> it's not captive. Okay. Um, so that, that'll go about an inch. It'll give you an inch in the front um, just to make sure you can angle it however you want flip this right way around we have our ir sensor on the front and i'm guessing obligatory one on the back somewhere yeah there we go right on the back here actually interesting it has like this uh matte silver finish it i thought it was brushed aluminum but i think this is um uh, plastic still anyway we got a big power button and it looks like there's a um like a, a light pipe around it for the um, power indication. Okay, uh, left, right, up, down. So I do like to see, not a lot of projectors have um, buttons built into them. Some of them do, but uh, a lot of times, I notice on a lot of projectors, they'll have the remote, obviously, and if you lose a remote, you're kind of screwed. Uh, you can't access the, the menu. You can, maybe there might be a couple buttons on board, 
uh, to quickly change modes or whatever, but you're kind of stuck with the settings if you lose your remote. I like to say that this actually has the full navigation on the projector itself. So even if you did lose your remote or the batteries died, you can still basically use the projector. So that's good to see. We have uh, VGA input, which is interesting. I, I, I like having the option for VGA. You can hook this up to like an older computer and um, definitely better quality than composite which it also has an input to through that uh that adapter dongle thing it came with but yeah i like vga has uh two usb ports one is labeled five volts and the other is u u is obviously data so you can plug in a thumb drive to that and the other one's just power only i guess so if you had to if you want to charge your phone while using this and we have a headphone jack which is also a welcome addition because the speakers on these are okay but Definitely, it'll it'll be much, much better getting even a cheap um, Bluetooth speaker. Something like um, trusty Anchor Soundcore I have here. Uh, this will beat the socks off the internal audio, just no contest. So definitely, if you have a, a projector set up, uh, having you know a way to get audio out of the projector is definitely a good idea and here's that speaker that i'm talking about the internal one it looks kind of like maybe a two inch uh, diameter speaker one of those like uh what are they like six watt ones not very large uh decent mids and highs but not so great bass and interestingly enough it looks like the um the ac input which is the isc connector obviously here it has a fusible input, so you can actually pop this out if the fuse blows. That's nice to see. On the side here, I am happy to say that there is a full-size SD card slot. So yeah, you can just stick an SD card from your camera or whatever camcorder in here and play back the video so long as the format is uh, compatible, which I'm going to guess already it's going to be MPEG-4 um, for playback and possibly AVI, something like that. Anyway... Uh, we have two HDMI ports, awesome. Um, so you can have a game console plugged into one and the other one, you know, a cable box or whatever you want. And massive cooling vent here. And I like this pattern. It, it's pretty, pretty slick. Uh, it's like something you'd see out of Star Wars or something in the background props. But yeah, anyway, you can see massive. There's like four copper heat pipes going through and a lot of vertical fins. So definitely cooling is uh, important for a, an, especially an LCD pro projector because the hotter the LCD gets, the shorter the lifespan. It'll cook it alive pretty easily. So they definitely took cooling uh, pretty seriously. And the vent actually extends a little bit onto the bottom as well. One thing I, I have noticed before, I didn't mention it, there's some kind of rattling inside. And I'm guessing that's the um, maybe the linkage yeah maybe the linkage to the um the keystone correction um lens it sounds I, that's not something i like to hear in like a a 200 dollar projector uh so yeah I, I would not probably carry this around with me too much i would just have the setup and not move it after that point you don't want anything breaking while traveling yeah and, and the linkage is easy enough the uh, knob itself for the keystone correction is uh, easy enough to move around. It's not stiff or anything. Focus, likewise, let's take the lens cap off. And you got this massive lens, obviously. And that does two things. Well, just having that large of a lens will let much more light through than is if they used a smaller lens. Uh, but it also has the unfortunate side effect. It'll protrude out quite a bit. And it's a lot of surface area to get fingerprints on, which I suppose that's why they gave you that uh, lint cloth. But yeah, at its uh, full extension, it'll stick out about a little under an inch, uh, which is pretty significant. And fully retracted, obviously, it'll go in and you can stick the lens cap on by that point. On the other side, we have that air filter. And yeah, you just pull down, comes out too. So actually pretty easy to clean this i would i would think and you can actually get a peer right into there um you can actually see sorry about that that white thing is actually the 45 degree mirror so i'm guessing the light source if i tilt up a little bit the light source is probably pointing in this direction 
Uh, the LCD and polarizing filter and the lens for the uh, keystone adjust is probably somewhere in the middle here. There's probably some optics, the culminating lens up here, and that 45 degree angle mirror, which redirects the light towards the lens and out. So it's sort of an L shape. And probably in this front corner, um, cooling the fan, the, uh, the heat sink is right up here, you can obviously see. So, and then you got fan here, maybe the power supply or something like that, I'm imagining. Yeah, and we have their logo on the front here, UUO. And the O is cutely enough like a video camera, like an old style looking one. Yeah, anyway, um, that's pretty much all it uh, in terms of the physical unit itself. Let's actually set this up, point this at like a nice large 85 inch uh, projection screen and uh, run some test videos. I'll play some games on it, hook it up to uh, some consoles and let's, let's have a little bit of fun. Okay, here we have the projector set up. I've used it actually for about probably to, in total like about five or six hours of runtime over the course of about two weeks. Uh, going on my third week now, and I'm just going to give you my thoughts on it and run through some games. I have my uh, my SNES Classic here set up with my wireless controller I made. I love that. <laughs> and um, just generally show you what the video quality is going to be like. So right now, as you can see, I have um, some lights on. I have my screen set up. It's sort of a little bit too zoomed in. It's a little cramped in this room, but you can see corner to corner. Uh, the screen is 85 inches, I believe. I'm not going to be able to uh, to project the full distance. As you can see, between the projector to the screen is only about, I would say, like five feet. We're not going to be able to get the, uh, the full wingspan of this projector, so to speak. Uh, so at this distance, I'm getting about, let's just switch it on real quick. I think I have batteries in here still. And yeah, there we go. So, boots up fairly quickly, like within five seconds to projection. And right now, I have a Wi-Fi uh, HDMI dongle, like a Miracast dongle, plugged in. And I'll explain why in a sec. And, yeah, it's all synced up, ready to go. It is playing. And just to give you a sense of the, um, the size of the projected image, right now it's tuned in. Uh, to the kind of right at the edge so five feet to give you about a yeah, let's just turn that volume down five feet to give you about I want to say that's about 40 inches maybe a little bit more uh, let's just straighten that a bit uh, so this is sort of the minimum size that you can actually focus to and if I go yeah, there's that so if I go all the way down I hit the end stop right here and that's perfectly in focus. And then if I go up, you can see the image actually um, gets a little bit larger, but it clearly gets out of focus. So this projector, you kind of are going to need greater than about five feet. Uh, and your image isn't going to be able to get any smaller than about 40, 45 inches, something like that. So that is a limitation. Uh, but, I mean, you can see I have the lights on and everything. And the image is actually really bright. Like, I'm surprised. And the colors are actually pretty vibrant, too. I'm surprised. This is a um, an LCD projector. And it, it in terms of, like, the the contrast and, like, the, the brightness of the colors, it's looking kind of more like a DLP projector to my eyes. So, yeah, we can go, like, right into the image. And uh, you can actually see the, like, individual pixels are nice and crisp. And, um... Yeah, it absolutely looks fantastic. Uh, this is with the lights on. Let's uh, shut them off for a second and I'll set down the, the camera and uh, do some gameplay. Okay, so I am set up. And I will say, unrelated to the contents of this video, I absolutely love the, uh, the Samsung Z Flip 3 that I'm using to record this. I don't even have a tripod. I just bent the front up and put it on the table. And it's perfectly angled anyway. So yeah, uh, the colors are actually really good. I'm surprised. And this, this is now with the lights off, clearly. And 
the image just is fantastic. There is some uh, keystone adjustment you can see here. As I push it all the way to the extremes, the edges of the screen clearly get out of focus. You just got to get it kind of tuned in to the right angle. And that looks pretty square to me. Maybe, yeah. Maybe adjust it a little left to right. Yeah, let's uh, fire up some Mario. And see sort of what kind of latency you can expect. Now, clearly, I'm using this wireless controller. And so that's going to add a little bit of latency. I, I think I measured it, and it was like a couple frames at 60 FPS. Uh, it wasn't too bad, uh, but that definitely will add a little bit of latency. But this is a hardware uh, HDMI connection. And so if I press the jump button, hopefully you can see. There. Yeah, it's, it's a little noticeable, so maybe for like something that requires very fast response times like Mike Tyson's punch out, that might be an issue, and, and it'll definitely be an issue if you jumped into the, uh, the bullet bill there. <laughs> okay, let's try not to die so easily this time. There we go. So yeah, definitely playable. I'm not the greatest set platforming games, I'm not gonna lie. Let's just, uh, after we get to the menu, just back out here. There we go. And sure, let's just save that. Let's do some Mario Kart. There we go, second place, not horrible, not particularly great, but... And let's just give it one more game, something different. Maybe some Donkey Kong Country. Not sure. Let's see where we... There we go. See, this looks fantastic, like, the, uh, that black background and the lime green text. So sorry about, I have the volume down low, I don't know if any of this is going to be copyrighted or whatnot.
<laughs> Almost missed that. Oops. Not mean to go back in there, but... There we go. I mean, I kind of got lost there, just stopped talking and kept playing. But yeah, in terms of uh, like the image quality, I really can't fault it. It looks fantastic. Uh, the only issue that I've really found was I have to grab my tablet now. I'm going to uh, switch this guy off. So I guess I'll quickly take you through the menu now. So obviously on this screen you can see you can directly select any of these uh, main sources by just hitting the source button on the remote. There is a built-in menu as well. And you can go through and actually tweak. Pretty much all projectors will do this nowadays. You can tweak the, uh, like the coloring, um, RGB independently, or set like by color temperature. You can change the aspect ratio. There is like a... a, a image noise filter that you can apply to the image. I usually just set it either low or middle. I don't really generally want that kind of thing to affect the image quality, especially if you're on HDMI and it's high resolution to begin with. And finally, yeah, you can switch uh, the projection orientation. So if you have the projector behind the screen or on the ceiling, you can adjust all that. And yeah. If I just select USB, I don't have USB plugged in right now, it'll take me to this screen here. So yeah, uh, this is sort of like kind of the main screen, I guess you could say. If you have a thumb drive plugged in, it'll allow you to select uh, whether you want to view movies, music, photo, or text. And if you go into any of these, it'll take you through sort of a... I don't think it'll let me because I don't have a thumb drive plugged in, but it'll take me to a file browser basically. And you can set up directories and sort and all that kind of stuff. So that's actually pretty neat to be able to do this. You don't need necessarily a computer or like a smart device plugged into this in order to like, watch a movie. So for the next part, I'm actually going to have to run down and grab my tablet. Uh, because we're going to test out the, uh, the smart casting feature, uh, like the wireless video casting, and I can't do that on my phone right now because it's what's recording. So give me one sec. Okay, so if I go down, so down from here, if I go to the icon before the last, it says screen, and this is to wirelessly mirror. Now this is the internal, uh, like mirror cast uh, system within the projector. So yeah, on my tablet here, it pops up as projector six something 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 and I'm just gonna allow it and within a couple seconds it should detect it and pop up there you go and there you go I'm just gonna turn my tablet sideways just so that fills the screen now you could see some pixelization going on there I have a scrolling background and it looks rather stuttery so that's one thing I've noticed um, it might be due to I have a, a router right behind us and it's running right now and I have multiple devices connected so maybe there's some congestion on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, band right now that could be affecting it but it's pretty hit or miss I would say 
definitely not so great on that front. Let's uh, open up YouTube and get a video started and see, hopefully that improves. Uh, let me just pull up my channel, my latest video. So one thing I will say, the speakers get pretty darn loud. So just pump this up all the way. Hey there, to test jam 4 through 6 back with another video. This time, look what just came in the middle. This guy. So, yeah, you can kind of hear one of the main problems. Uh, I think it's a bandwidth issue, if I'm being honest. Uh, the wireless connection, I'm like literally not even two feet away with my tablet from the projector. And right now, let's see what the video quality is set to. It's set to 480p on my tablet. But I would be guessing that uh, the actual Miracast like video quality should be 1080p, the native uh, the native resolution of this projector. Maybe it might be 720p, but still, clearly, it's having trouble uh, maintaining like a consistent, not just a uh, frame rate, but also like a consistent audio quality. Uh, clearly this is the new, uh, Legend of Zelda game. And I look how hey, pixelated I did a video that is. I'm, I'm just gonna bump up the resolution on my tablet so it's playing back the video. Oh, it just, uh, connect at 720p. Let's bump this up to 1080p. And see what the performance on that is. For when the uh, Super Mario Bros. version came out. And I still have it here. It still has a charge hook, right? So, to my eyes, and I'll, I'll zoom in for you guys. So get right in there. That doesn't really look, especially if I let's get this starting to play. Damage. You can see all that. Wow. Okay, yeah. So it's clearly having trouble with the connection. And it's like dropping frames as well as the audio is now clicking which I'm gonna turn down the volume on that. So I think what's actually happening is um, my tablet might be playing it back at 720p or 1080p, but before sending it to the projector, it must be compressing it down. It, do, like from the video quality, it looks actually around like 480p or less even. There we go. So now we're on my external dongle and you can see the at least the uh, the menu is super clear, so let's connect to that. And there we go. And already from this screen, I can tell that the video quality is already significantly better. And there is some blockiness when I'm moving the screen very quickly, but it recovers pretty quickly. And when it's just kind of a still image, it more or less looks fine now. So let's uh, play back that same video. Yeah, it looks like the aspect ratio of the original is a little and bit... Despite the buffering, there was a little bit of blockiness. Uh, it's, it's, it's still considerably better, I would say. Let's go to a different portion of the video with more detail, more light. Yeah, so even this isn't perfect, but this is definitely watchable. So... Basically, my whole point is, if you're going to get this, uh, use a wired connection. It, it does have for convenience, I guess. Maybe there are some situations, if you just want to like look at a picture that's not moving or something, that you might be able to get away with looking at um, using the internal wireless cast. But yeah, the best quality, just wire HDMI into it and be done with it. Uh, it's a lot less hassle, and you'll be able to get actually native 1080p video output Instead of even this doesn't look, um, does not look 1080. This looks maybe borderline 720p to 480p, something like that. And you can even see when I'm um, bringing up the on-screen menu or not, it's pixelating. So yeah, I, I think it's just a limitation in general of um, of like wireless casting from this tablet to either the internal or the dongle. It's just not so great there, but. Yeah, like I said, 
just switch over to HDMI. You might notice I actually enabled, you can change the transparency of all the menus. I enabled it so you could still see the image behind it, but also be able to switch. Yeah, you can see right now I'm rendering at 720p 60 hertz supposedly, uh, but I'm guessing my tablet might be compressing or something like that, because that definitely does not quite look like a 720p image to me. But yeah, like I said, just switch over to a hardwired HDMI cord to a video source and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now I will say this, the last time I used the internal Wi-Fi, I used the phone that I'm recording this on right now, my Samsung Z Flip 3, and the video quality, while not, it, it was more consistent the last time I tested it. And it still had the issue with it being all blocky and stuff like that. And I didn't notice any audio delay or dropout. Like this time I definitely noticed. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe I have uh, more Wi-Fi devices on this time that's interfering with the signal or something going on there. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, definitely there's something clearly going on. It could also be my tablet because this was actually the first time I tried using my tablet to cast to it. Okay, so one of the other downfalls I found is you might be able to hear it right now. Hopefully you can hear it. Uh, this is not a quiet projector. And if you are watching in a fairly small room where the projector is near to you, uh, you'll definitely 100% notice it. Uh, if you have this like up on a ceiling in the back projecting like a, a larger image than this, uh, I think it would be bearable. Um, I can understand why these LED projectors are less optically efficient than like a DLP or uh, like a laser projector. So there's a lot of heat that it needs to get rid of. And I've seen some manufacturers with very quiet projectors, but I've read kind of a lot of customer complaints that uh, the LCDs degrade over time because of the high heat. And so it's sort of a trade-off. Either you have a quiet uh, LCD projector with like a very bright output, but it doesn't last as long because of the heat buildup uh, damages the LCD eventually, or you have one that's slightly louder like this, uh, but at least it keeps the LCD panel a little bit cooler to extend the lifetime. It's sort of a trade-off. I could live with this, honestly, because at least the speaker's loud enough to overwhelm the fan noise, so I, I'd be fine with this. And actually, my use case is not normally in this room. I would actually have it set up downstairs in my living room, uh, in which case the projector would actually be like you know, a good 10 feet behind me. <laughs> so it's not nearly as noticeable. If, if you're sitting down with literally with the projector next to you or behind you, yeah, this is sort of irritating. I will say though, for an LCD projector, this is one of the better um, like color quality ones that I've actually seen. Like the colors are actually really vibrant on this. And I don't think I actually ended up tweaking any of the color settings. This is already, this is from the factory. Uh, so it does look fantastic. So yeah, like I said, depends on what your use case is, whether this is really worth the 230 some bucks um, that they're asking for. I would say this would be kind of good. Like I would have loved to have one of these uh, in my dorm in college. Uh, this is fairly quick and easy to set up. It's just sort of plop it down, plug it into a wall outlet and deploy. Uh, and it does definitely give a very large, bright image, uh, even with the lights on. I'm bringing on the lights right now, so just watch your eyes. There, even with the lights on, looks absolutely fantastic. At least at this size, I could definitely see, pull it back like a few feet and bring it up to around 80 inches. I would say that would still be viewable probably in like kind of dim conditions. And if you have the lights completely off, I could see this guy going above 100 inches easy. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I've been doing random projector review videos for like the longest time. These are some of the funnest to review, in my opinion, because I actually get to use it to play games and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, if you guys are interested, I will have um, the link to the Amazon seller down below, as well as I'll have uh, it updated if there's like a sale price or anything like that. So I'll let you guys know about that as well. I know, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.